You know, we first got going on this for reversing diabetes, and we've had thousands of patients who were diabetic on multiple medications, not type 1, but type 2 diabetic, some of whom even on insulin. And we'll start them on this 28-day program, and on day one, stop all their medications. Completely confident in that. Welcome to the Healthy Skin Show with Jennifer Fugo, where we're flipping everything you've been told about your chronic skin issues upside down and connecting you with alternative solutions your dermatologist never told you about. Welcome to episode number seven of the Healthy Skin Show. Today, we're going to talk all about your liver and how your liver is so important, not just to your health in general, but to rebuilding healthy skin. First, I want to say thank you so much and give a shout out to one of my listeners. His name is Joe Riggs, and he shared a really amazing review over on iTunes. I just want to say thank you. He said, I've been following Jennifer for quite a while, and as someone who's dealt with eczema, I was so happy that she started an amazing podcast. She's truly been a trusted source of valuable information, and this podcast is no different. Episode number two with Kelsey Kinney was particularly eye-opening. At the 12 minute, 30 second mark, talking about restrictive diets was such a game changer for me. The connection between the gut, inflammation, and your skin cannot be talked about enough. This is huge. Do yourself a favor, hit the subscribe button now and enjoy. Joe, thank you so much for tuning in and being a listener. I really deeply appreciate it. And if any of you want to share your thoughts about the podcast, head on over to iTunes and leave a review. Now, before we dive into our interview today, I've got a really great guest ahead. I want to answer a listener's question, as I typically do. And so we've got a great question from Maria. My question is, what do you use to support your liver when you detoxify? Thank you, Maria, for asking this question. It's one that is of vital importance. And it's one that, I'm going to be honest with you, a lot of people mistakenly think that they need to focus on. And so I don't want you to feel bad for asking a question where I'm saying that you're mistakenly focusing on it. The truth is, the way that we talk about our liver and what we need to do for our liver, for optimum health, as well as our skin, because that's really the focus of this show, is to focus less on the concept of detoxifying or cleansing the liver and instead focusing more on supporting it. So your liver actually has two separate pathways by which it detoxifies things that you're exposed to. And those exposures can come from elements in your environment, so fumes in your house or chemicals that you're exposed to through body care products or food or whatever, And it's also responsible for detoxifying. And I'm using that term kind of loosely because I I know that you guys think that detoxifying something is necessarily bad, but the liver's detoxification process allows for it to also do conversions in your system. So for example, it's going to convert your hormones, your steroid hormones. It's also going to be responsible for turning on your vitamin D. It's responsible for turning off your estrogen and getting excess estrogen out of your system. So it does a lot of things that you might not even realize. And it also has to deal with the waste products that come through natural cellular metabolism. So all of your cells have little power plants in them. And those little power plants called mitochondria put off We like to think of them as free radicals, but you can think of them as like fumes, like a factory would have a smoke stack with fumes coming out the top and your body's detoxification system has to deal with those. So a lot of times when people have skin issues, the things that they think about or read about online are emphasizing or pushing them into this state of wanting to detox and feeling like we need to detox things. And the reality is that that is super unsupportive, and it oftentimes pushes unnecessary stress upon your liver that it does not need because in actuality, your liver is already stressed. And that can happen because of a number of reasons. One major reason is that 
pretty much all of the cases of chronic skin rash conditions that I have worked with in my practice all have underlying gut issues, even those who have no gut symptoms. So this is really surprising. I have clients that have zero gut symptoms. They poop normally one to three times a day. They don't have gas or bloating or digestive pain or anything. They come to discover they actually did have some issues with um, low stomach acid through the work that we do. But then as we begin to unravel the problems, oh, there was a problem pretty big within the GI tract that was we were unaware of or they were unaware of. And so you have to address things in a very specific order in the body. So if your gut, for example, is off, if it is not working optimally, if digestion or absorption is impaired, it is very likely then that your liver is going to be overwhelmed for a couple of reasons. Number one, it may not have enough nutrients that is required of it to make certain things happen. So you have two detox pathways, as I was describing, phase one and phase two. Well, phase two detox within your liver requires different, it's different pathways, but they require different, what we call like cofactors or substrates. You could think of them as just ingredients as part of a recipe, but they're required. It's like, you can't expect your bread to rise if you don't put yeast in it, you know? So it's the same type of deal. And certain pathways require things like glycine or glutathione, for example, in order to run optimally. However, if your liver is bombarded by a lot of toxins due to, say, dysbiosis or an infection in your gut, it is now having a really hard time dealing with all the toxic waste that's being thrown at it because it's responsible for dealing with that in addition to everything else it's supposed to be doing. And if the gut is unchallenged, it may not be absorbing the nutrients that's necessary like glycine. Glycine is an amino acid. So if you're having a problem breaking down protein, it's also possible that you may not have enough glycine in your system to handle the load that's being thrown the liver's way. And so one very common story in my practice is that Clients will express that in doing research online, they came across this notion that they should do like a liver detox or a liver cleanse. And unfortunately, they began to flare and get a lot worse as a result of doing that because the cleanse or the detox puts an undue amount of stress upon the liver that it just cannot bear. And I'm not going to go in depth right now into the whole ins and outs of the liver because I've actually have a whole separate podcast that specifically deals with this and explains and simplifies this whole system of phase one and phase two detoxification for you. And I will put that link in the show notes. It's actually a podcast. It's under 10 minutes. So it's a super short listen. And you're going to completely understand how the liver does its job once you listen to it. So what I would recommend instead of detoxing and cleansing your liver is to focus on supporting it. What can you do to support your liver so that it can deal with whatever work you need to do on your body or in your gut or your hormones or whatever? That way you're not fighting a greater battle and putting more undue stress on your body because I don't want to see your issues and your symptoms become worse as a result of just throwing more like gasoline essentially on the fire. Okay. So think about how you can support your liver as opposed to detoxifying or cleansing it. And with that said, I think it's time to dive into today's interview. Today, I've got a very special guest for you, someone whom I have a great amount of respect for, and I've known for quite some time and love all of the work that he does. Plus as a person, he is just a true wonderful soul. So I'm looking forward to sharing his work with you today. His name is Dr. Alan Christensen. He's a naturopathic endocrinologist who focuses on thyroid function, adrenal health, and metabolism. He's been actively practicing in Scottsdale since 1996 and is the founding physician behind Integrative Health. He is a New York Times bestselling author whose books include The Metabolism Reset Diet, The Adrenal Reset Diet, and The Complete Idiot's Guide to Thyroid Disease. Dr. Christensen regularly appears on national media, so you may have seen him on shows like Dr. Oz, The Doctors, and The Today Show. Dr. C., thank you so much for joining us. 
Hey, Jennifer, that was super kind. Thank you so much. I'm jazzed to, jazzed to be here with you. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah. And so <laughs> one of my favorite topics to talk about is liver health. And you've got this great new book out where you've tied metabolism issues to the functioning of your liver, yeah. which I think is really cool. And a lot of my chronic skin clients have issues with liver. The liver is just totally overtaxed. So can you talk to us a little bit? Because I haven't really dealt with liver stuff yet on this podcast. Tell us a little bit about what the liver does in, in terms of metabolism, detoxification, et cetera, that really has fueled your work. Yeah, you know, just to make a quick connection with with the skin, make this really relevant for for the listeners. So, there's a lot of byproducts that the body needs to process and get rid of, and that's one of the liver's many tasks. It's it's a it's a big buffer for lots of things. But yeah, it's getting rid of waste that come from the environment, but even more so the ones that come from our bodies. Like like there's exhaust from a car, so we have waste from burning fuel, and most waste that the liver processes it tries to send out through bile, which we would poop out or other things we would pee out. But when that can't work as well, a lot of those same wastes go out through the skin. And that's often one of the base components of much for skin disease. You know, eczema, psoriasis, dermatitis. An extreme example of that can be jaundice where the skin is overtly yellow and the liver is completely blocked, but it's not all or nothing. So in many cases, when there's chronic inflammation of the skin, it's because too much is being diverted from the liver to the skin because the liver can't work right. And that's a big problem. When you have chronic skin issues, a lot of times there's just so much waste in the system that your mm -hmm. poor liver is really struggling. And how exactly would this then connect to your metabolism? Because another issue, it's not always the initial or large complaint that a lot of clients have, but they always tend to have body fat that they're trying to get rid of and they're really struggling. They're also in this like perimenopausal stage a lot of times or they've actually transitioned to menopause. What is the connection there? Because I believe that the liver, at least from my schooling and education, the liver is really responsible for managing your blood sugar levels as well. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, the emerging concept called leaky liver. So really. Yeah, so we're just barely hearing about that. But in the case of managing blood sugar you mentioned, so someone's got diabetes, one of the hallmark signs of that is they have high blood sugar when they wake up and after meals. Now, when you wake up, you know, you didn't just eat. So when your blood sugar is high, that's because it was leaking out of the liver. There was too much coming out of the liver as you're sleeping. And then after meals, this is a recent thing we've discovered. We used to think that you know, we had a meal, I just had some food recently. And so the glucose in our bloodstream, we think is the result from what we just ate. It seems really intuitive, but they've been able to differentiate that now to differentiate the glucose from a meal versus the glucose from the liver. And most people that have struggles with their weight or their liver function in some way, their glucose after a meal isn't from their meal. 78, 80% of it comes from their liver releasing it. It's not from what they just ate. <laughs> wow. That yeah. is quite different than what most people actually think. You know, we troubleshoot which food I ate. Did I eat too much carbs? Did I eat bad food? And it was actually, that was none of it. That was the tiniest part of the glucose in the bloodstream. The bulk of it is what our body is making. So, you know, in terms of how the liver manages our, our blood sugar, like you mentioned, how it manages our energy and our weight. So our bodies need fuel constantly. We're sleeping, moving, whatever. And we also need certain nutrients almost constantly. But if you think about it, we don't intake them constantly. You know, we eat a certain number of times and whatever frequency it is, good or bad, it's not constant, you know? And same thing for nutrients, the building blocks we need, the micronutrients to help carry out reactions. We don't consume them when we need them. So the liver is this big warehouse and we're holding on to fuel, we're holding on to nutrients. And when it works really good, it gives us what we need on the spot. Now, what I've seen as the real pitfall with people in terms of the weight is that I think everyone has a sense that if they starve themselves in some way, they can have their weight go down. But the problem is that they don't feel well. You know, their energy is compromised and their weight shoots up again. Maybe they lose a lot of muscle mass. So none of us get exactly the fuel we need on a given day. So our liver is always buffering that. There's always a little too much or a little bit too little. And when your liver works right, that 
too much or too little is not a big deal. You know, you've got harmless ways to make glycogen or triglycerides. Those are stored fuels in the liver. And that doesn't mean you gain weight. You just got more fuel for the future. And the days where you get too little, you're not wiped out. You just draw that out of your liver and you're fine. So the trick is, yeah, not how do you starve yourself in the latest du jour way. The trick is, how do you get it to where your flexibility comes back again? And you're not a prisoner to eating, just be on this tightrope of not too much, not too little. (laughs) It's really interesting that you mentioned that because A, I've had a lot of clients that are kind of starving themselves, eating very small portions. They have thyroid dysfunction. They've got these chronic skin issues. They've got weight to lose. They're just really unhappy. They've got a lot of gut issues as well. So we have this whole part where the liver is being bombarded by toxins and it's unhappy and it cannot Mm -hmm. manage that. But then on this other flip side, you've got the liver where it has lost, as you said, its flexibility in being able to be up to task for whatever the day is going to throw at it. So what have you found through working with patients that helps you rebalance the liver, so to speak, give it that flexibility back? Is there a way to do that? Or do we have to obsess over calories and carbs and fear them? And like, what's, what can we do? Well, so as important as your liver is, the, the positive side of the story is that it's also resilient and it's quite regenerative. It's got a large capacity to heal and repair itself. So yeah, I tried to sort this out for so long. And the, the idea about cutting out a food category, you know, it's tricky because carbs, fats, even ketones, they're all the same thing to your liver. They're all oxaloacetate when they're broken down. There's not one that's good and one that's bad. It's how, how much we've got in that whole fuel bucket. And then I even thought about what about just just cutting all of that low and just fasting. And the pitfall there is your liver needs building blocks to get rid of the stored fuel. So it needs certain essential amino acids from proteins to package up wastes to get rid of them. So I've created a, an approach that limits fuel, you know, it doesn't starve fuel, but it limits the, all the different types of fuel together, but still keeps healthy amounts of plant-based, you know, um, non-acidic proteins present and allows for a certain amount of food. So the liver is getting the nourishment that it needs, but you're also creating a situation in which it can get rid of all that fuel that's clogging it up. I love the fact that you say you're giving the liver all the nutrients that it needs. That's Mm -hmm. a concept that we haven't ever really talked about in wellness because everybody's so fixated on detoxing their liver that they don't realize, at least it's been my opinion, I'd be curious as to yours, that I feel like a lot of liver detoxing is actually too harsh for most people. It can exacerbate things and make things worse. Do you think we should be detoxing or is it more of a supportive approach to the liver that seems to help bring it back in line and, and help with all the different systems of the body? You know, I thought about this like like you're mining and you've got these these tunnels and little cars in the tunnels and the guys with the picks getting the rocks out of the wall and putting them in the carts. And so imagine that a lot of these tunnels are clogged up. So the thing that's going to work is you've got to get more carts down there to get the stuff that's clogging the tunnels and get all that out again. So detox by itself would be like just getting more rocks off the wall. And that's you know, with, with liver metabolism, we think about its oxidation pathways where it pulls the rocks off the wall, you know, like into the tunnel, and then the conjugation pathways where it puts the rocks in the carts and hauls the carts out. And it seems that in modern life, we've got a lot of factors that speed up this breakdown or metabolism of wastes, but too few things that help us with the elimination of wastes. And so we get thrown off that way. So yeah, it's very common people have more of a need to get caught up on the cleaning than the mobilizing. (laughs) Mm, I love that. I love that. So with somebody who's struggling, so say if one of our listeners is hearing us have this conversation and she's got thyroid issues, she's got weight to lose, she's got eczema or psoriasis or something else going on, these chronic skin manifestations, which we know for sure liver issues are definitely one of the root causes of skin issues. Plus we've got these other factors what would be the first step? Like, should she get some sort of testing done? Is there some, you know, basic dietary, easy, simple changes that she could make to just get started right after we're listening to our conversation today? You know, first thing I love you mentioned testing is really just seeing where the situation is. And here's an easy thing you can do at home. And here's an easy thing that's in every single blood test. So the at home thing is your waist to height ratio. 
Now, people have talked about body mass index or waist hip ratio or lots of other things, but there's been mountains of evidence about waist to height ratio being a predictor of liver health and also one of the biggest predictors of just overall mortality risk. So you want to know your height in inches. And as adults, most of us haven't had our height change too much in the recent past. So we may know that pretty well, just top of mind, but then get a good waist measurement. And the way it's defined for this, this concept is a uh, belly button. So inches around the belly button, first thing in the morning, you know, we work hard to hold it in, but yeah, don't <laughs> just in the morning, do the empty yourself out in the bathroom really good. And then just deep breath in, let it out and measure inches around the belly button. And it's just height divided by, by waist. Now the number to shoot for is half. So if your circumference around your waist, is less than half of your height, there's a pretty good chance you're in good shape. And 0.4 might be just ideal. Whenever you're above one half, there's some level of risk towards your liver health. And, you know, the liver is the biggest single driver of waist circumference in that part of the body. So it it takes up the whole abdominal cavity, both sides. It's really big and it changes in size pretty easily. So yeah, height to waist ratio is the first simple step someone can take. That's great. That's actually, I love at home tests that are very simple like that, that also don't cost someone any money because they're not really sure what to do with it. And are there any particular, just, you know, we talk a lot about collagen with skin health or particular type of amino acids. Like I love to use glycine with clients. Is there any particular type of liver fuel? that our listeners should start to make themselves aware of? Well, the funny thing is, I think about the the liver's various things that tax it. And all the data they look at seems to point to the fact that the biggest stress is just processing our food. You know, we talk a lot about the gut being the entry point for the body. And when you think about it, it's really more so the liver. You know, the gut is still not even inside the body until things come in the bloodstream. And from there, they go to the liver and the liver immune cells decides if things are okay or not. But the biggest amount of work the liver carries on is just processing our food, the carbs, the proteins, the fats, even the ketones, whatever it is. So you'll hear about, you know, fructose being bad for the liver or saturated fat being bad for the liver or this being good for the liver. And they're all completely contextual. So when your liver is at fuel capacity, everything over that capacity is hard on it. That's the thing. Even even like the fructose studies, I don't recommend fructose to add to your diet, but it doesn't hurt the liver in studies until someone's already at their fuel needs and it's added on top of it. So all the things that are good and bad are completely contextual. So the first thing is just not blowing past what your fuel needs are. Now, I categorize fuel as the carbs and the fats primarily or any ketone supplements because protein is different. So the liver has a pronounced need for essential amino acids, and that doesn't really change based upon activity levels or whether you've got too much or too little fuel. So a lot of people try to lose weight, but the pitfall is they'll compromise their protein status. And the reason why that's bad, of course, we lose muscle mass we lose muscle mass because your liver still needs to get protein from somewhere. So if you're getting too little dietary protein, your liver then eats up your muscles to do its best to carry on its reactions. And then you end up slowing your metabolism further and setting yourself up for just more struggles. I have to tell you, I love what you just said. (laughs) Like, love it. Because one of my biggest complaints, I would say, or issues that I have with clients is oftentimes they've cut protein down to a point where they're maybe eating only 30 or 40 grams a day, which for, especially when you have thyroid issues and other hormone issues, I'm like, you know, there's really no storage for protein. You need a constant influx, especially if you've got healing and repairing to do. So I love that. And I'm, that's one reason why I'm very excited for your brand new book. Can you tell us a little bit about, you know, obviously this is a snippet of this larger conversation that you have in this book. Can you share it with us? Why should somebody go and check it out? Because I am so excited for it. Well, the book is really meant to be the kind of thing that you you tear up and dog ear and go through as a program. You know, that's what it really is. is it's a 28-day reset. So the exciting thing is that in the course of just a few weeks, you can completely shift your liver function and get it from where it's, you know, holding you on a tightrope to where 
too much is weight gain and too little is exhaustion to where you've got some leeway again. And that's, that's the part I'm jazzed about. You know, we first got going on this for reversing diabetes and we've had thousands of patients who were diabetic on multiple medications, not type one, but type two diabetic, some of whom even on insulin. And we'll start them on this 28 day program and on day one, stop all their medications. Completely confident in that. I'm not advocating this to those that we're not working with, but when we supervise someone, we'll stop their medications. And over the course of 28 days, they can be non-diabetic in almost all cases. Wow. So we saw though that the main thing happening was this, this change in the liver and realizing that this is a big benefit to many who are not diabetic. Half of adults in America, a little over half, either are diabetic or are highly at risk for it. And there's similar numbers for a thing called fatty liver syndrome. And almost anyone to where their appetite, their energy, and their weight just don't naturally sync up, they've got problems with their liver. So I'm really jazzed that that can change so quickly for people. And the book is just like a total roadmap on how you do that. It does talk about the hows and the whys and the nerdy stuff that I find fascinating, but it just, here's what you do. It's, it's that too, and <laughs> recipes. And, <laughs> and this is also great because for someone who knows who's going to do their height to waist ratio and they're going to figure out what's going on with that. So we've got your little at-home test. Can I throw in one other, yeah, one other go test? Ahead. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I prefaced this before. I didn't close the loop on it. I'm sorry, but... Imagine your listeners, they're, they're savvy, and you've probably got access to some of your recent blood tests. In almost all cases, when you have a blood test, there's a thing called a chemistry panel. Way back when, this was called a SMAC. Now it's usually called a chem panel. And in that, there's almost always liver function tests. So there's one called ALT, and that's alanine aminotransferase. It's, a, it's an enzyme that's normally only inside of liver cells. And it's normal that liver cells die and pop open and new cells take their place. So the amount of that ALT that's in the bloodstream is proportionate to how many liver cells are dying. And some is normal. But when there's a higher rate of cell death, this number gets higher. Now, here's the big wrinkle. Most labs say that you're normal between somewhere in the low single, high single digits, like six to nine is most common for the low end. And then high end of normal might be upper 40s to low 60s. It varies per region. But if you're a woman, all liver specialists agree that if you're above 19, something's wrong. Really? So you can be pretty much dead center of normal, but have a problem going on. Wow. Yeah, and that's a very easily obtained test. Most doctors will run like a CMP or a BMP, and it should should typically show up in one of those. But as long as you're asking for your CMP, a comprehensive metabolic panel, it'll show up on that. Yeah, if you've had any blood test done, you've probably had that done. It's not anything esoteric. And yeah, you can be spot on within normal and no debate at all. Liver specialists say, hey, something's wrong for a woman who's over 19. And it definitely could be other factors, medication reactions, hepatitis, infections. The most common thing, though, barring any obvious explanation, is early fatty liver syndrome. And that's what this thing is I'm talking about. The liver gets so clogged up with fuel that it can't burn. It creates symptoms and eventually it gets sick, too. And that's why this is a great opportunity for us to dive into this because liver is such a big piece of it. And I really appreciate you for having this conversation with us today and sharing. I hope that we can maybe have you back sometime to talk more about this because the liver is just so important. It's such an important organ and I feel like we don't give enough attention to it. We fixate on a lot of other things when it's really, it's a big piece to solving the puzzle. <laughs> And I'm excited for your new book. I'm going to put a link to where everyone can get it in the show notes. Is there anything, final thoughts you'd love to share or any place you'd love to direct the listeners to go check out? You know, final thoughts, I guess the big thing is just that when things don't work that way, there's reasons for it. You know, if, if you've had, you've done the right things, but you still have the skin symptoms, your energy isn't stable, or if your weight doesn't seem to respond properly to a good diet or exercise, you know, it's not your fault. There's something wrong. And the main issue behind those collective patterns of symptoms is liver function. And the inspiring thing is that can change. It can get better in just a few weeks. The liver is regenerative. It, it is um, one of the most amazing organs in the body, in my opinion. Yeah. 
Well, I'm so glad that I could have you, Dr. C, share all this great information. And everybody, please go check out the book. Get yourself a copy. This is a fantastic resource for all of us because liver, no matter what you're dealing with, and it sounds like, too, if you've got a spouse that has maybe blood sugar issues, metabolic syndrome, they're yeah. not quite on board with doing your program, but you guys could do this together. It would have a really great impact on your family as well as everyone's health and getting everybody back in line and regenerating your liver. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> liver support is and balance is a good thing. Well, thank you yeah. so much, Dr. C. I appreciate your time. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Awesome stuff you're doing. All right, that's a wrap for today's show. I hope that this has been helpful and given you guys a whole new appreciation for your liver. Love your liver, support your liver. Don't worry about detoxifying it. And if you're looking for those resources that we talked about today, head on over to the show notes. That way we've got everything there for you. And if you wanna pick up a copy of Dr. C's book, it's super easy to find. I hope that this has been helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode so you can continue on your journey to rebuilding healthier, clearer skin. <laughs>